The Nigerian army indicted to use live bullets on uh, end SARS protesters and killed 11 persons and injured four persons at the Leki toll gate. The death of Itinu Babalola in Ivory Coast prison is raising concerns as Nigerians demand to know the real cause of her death. And would we'll always be reviewing the newspapers on Off the Press this morning, where our guests, of course, will join us to have a quick review of the major stories making headlines across Nigeria today. Well, good morning and welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Thank you very much for joining us. I am Osaogi Ogbonwa. And I am Messi Bupo. It's a very beautiful morning and thanks for joining us as always. Absolutely. And as always, we get straight into the conversations this morning by starting with some of the biggest stories that have made headlines across the country this morning. We, of course, uh, later on would be speaking with uh, certain persons, you know, concerning the end SARS protest and uh, the report of the Judicial Panel of Inquiry. Uh, that's going to make one of our major conversations this morning. But before we get there, let's talk about some of the things that are trending this morning. We'll start in the University of Ilori, where a 400-level student uh, has been expelled uh, for something that, you know, shocked the whole of Nigeria. I, I, I saw the video a few days ago and I was completely stunned. His name, uh, Abdul Wahid Waliu who, of course, uh, was, um, has been expelled, finally, for beating up a female lecturer of the University of Ilorin. He had, of course, according to the story, approached her because he didn't have something called uh, the Student Industrial Work Experience Scheme. He hadn't done that, and so he had approached her for help, and they got into some verbal altercations, I believe, and next thing you know, it starts physically assaulting her. She eventually uh, collapsed uh, before he was apprehended and, you know, has now been expelled and uh, I, i'm not even sure what to say to him if i was his parent or if i was you know somebody close to him because you've done four years at university and this is how you end up but this is what you do to yourself um, all of the time all of the resources everything gone yeah i mean it, it just makes absolutely no sense you know i, I understand you, there's the angle and i saw a few people mentioning yesterday that yes um, uh, you know um, when we talk about mental health um challenges you know it's not necessarily for people who are already naked and walking across the streets you know there are people who even in their homes people who you see at school every day on campus on at work who have mental health challenges and it takes one thing to trigger it but it's still not enough you know reason or still not enough defense um you know for assaulting a female lecturer assaulting anybody at all and it also you know points once again to the uh, conversation on uh, the safety of women in Nigerian society. Mm. Really, I I'm thinking that, you know, his expulsion will serve as a deterrent to uh, other students who would think that they can actually practice this, go ahead and assault lecturers. The thing is, you also have lecturers being assaulted, and you also have a situation where students have been assaulted as well. So it's a two-way thing. But I I'm thinking that in an institution, because this person is a human being, if you actually miss a particular course or an experiment or what have you, you could probably still negotiate when can you have it taken. But you find out that there are a lot of lazy students, you know, these days around. Not to say that you don't have the ones that are, you know, very serious and committed and dedicated to their work. But you see, everybody just wants to get it across, yeah. uh, you know, with force and all of that. Uh, it is quite um, shameful, like you had mentioned. And there's a system in every institution. That's why there's government in every institution. There's government everywhere. The essence you have government is so that we don't have chaos and anarchy. And so things should be done in an orderly manner. So, for instance, if he's going to say the lecturer triggered, uh, you know, there was a trigger from the part of the lecturer, and that's why he reacted. The system already creates, um, you know, means where you can actually address this rather than taking the laws into your hands. So whatever the case may be, uh, it's not in anybody's hands to take the laws into your hands, whether you're a student or you're a lecturer. The system on its own has created all of those mechanisms where all of these issues can be redressed and, address and all of that. So but it's really disappointing to see that happen. Very, very sad. And yeah. sometimes I ask myself, I'll still say that again, we have lost humanity. How, would you hit someone like that? She could be your mom. She could be anybody. She could I can be imagine, imagine, you know, you know, a man at home hearing that a student assaulted his wife. 
Mm. And, and then so we're going to be having the whole back and forth and then he comes and I saw the student and you know you uh, yeah I mean of course those things you know are expected but of course they very likely wouldn't play out in this case um, I just feel bad for um, for the lecturer and then also for the parents of the of the young man who now have to figure out what he's gonna do with his life and you know how he's gonna start uh, um, all over from you know university again now, because this is what it means once you've been ex ex expelled you're gonna have to start from scratch again and it's totally different university maybe a private university at this point and if you're in university of Illinois, it means that the option of a private university maybe wasn't there in the first place so it's going to start all over again yes it's going to start all over again and in situations like this you could also be charged for you know with uh, assault um and that is of course a criminal um, um uh, that's a criminal case you know um, entirely so there's so much you know connected to this um there is you know those who also mentioned that all oh, some lecturers at universities are so wicked you know and and um you know they, they frustrate students and some of all other but it, there's there's nothing that I've been able to imagine that is uh, big enough or that is that is you know um, you know that painful you know that would warrant such you know actions. Um, there's nothing that you can Im I can imagine that would trigger uh, you to physically assault a lecturer. You know, yesterday, I, I, either male or female doesn't matter. Yesterday, I saw some comments. You know, because that generated conversation across different spaces. So I saw several comments, people saying, "Oh, you have done what a lot of us were willing to do," and some persons went to disagree that we never ever taught, no matter how difficult our lecturers were. Yeah. I never thought about you know um, having to assault. Up until this moment, I still have good rapport with all of my lecturers, the head of department. Yes, I'm, I'm not joking. I can still call well, them up at any time. <laughs> So, so, but the truth is, another point also is the fact that students also need to learn. So, at Paraventure, yes, I know you're in your final year, and that can be very, very stressful to think that you probably have to repeat uh, that entire process. That would be the reason why you have to repeat. Why did you not meet up? What happened when others were doing it? So, if you have a valid excuse, and if the lecturer says you cannot, there's no other chance, it means that you have to have a carryover or probably come up for summer or you know next semester and that's not a big deal because we have not been taught that it's okay to fail we cannot feel like failing is such Absolutely a big deal not. There's nothing wrong in failing, you know, it's only when you don't even try. So it's okay to say, yes, you have an extra, you know, uh, summer to come through for, you have an extra course, you know, to rewrite. And nobody's going to die, actually. So, so you take your so time that is something, and do the right thing. That is something that I, I've also seen a few people mention, that when people have carryovers and when people have, you know, situations like this where they missed out on a certain, you know, part of the, you know, the, the university the uh, assessment. system. Mm. Exactly. They, they, they don't necessarily, uh, so it may not be the same thing with this CWS, you know, pro, uh, scheme. Um, but they, when people have carryovers that may, you know, did, you know, make them have an extra year in school, you don't necessarily need to do that. You can really just have summer programs where people come back, pay, you know, a certain amount to university and rewrite those exams and then still graduate along with their peers instead of having them have to come back and do another whole year and have extra years in university. No, but in some universities, the provision for all of that, but my point is, is usually in the part of the students where they feel like they can't even come back. I'm done, I'm done. Why am I coming back for summer? That's a lot of time. But the point is, there's really nothing. If you don't come back, you spend an extra year. <laughs> is, that, is that hard? Um, um, some other thing that I was going to mention, uh, the, oh, no, I totally forgot. Um, the, the university um, environment, the whole process of going through a university, um, should teach you not necessarily just education and the course of study, because he was studying microbiology, but it should also teach you about life. She teach you about self control, but that's but that's what we're missing. Yeah, you know, I mean, right? We're really missing that. So I'm, I'm, ref I'm referring to those people who said he's done something that a lot of us have wanted to do. Why didn't you do it? It's because you had sense. You knew the you know what will happen if you ever tried you know that kind of thing. If you ever assaulted a lecturer in university, especially to this you know extent, you, every all of them knew. So it's that level of self-control that they had, no matter how frustrated they were in university. I understand that there are some certain lecturers that are completely evil. I understand people who have had to spend extra years because, you know, somebody was trying to sleep with them and they refused to. Those things are completely evil and the university system still needs to do a lot more to protect students like that and ensure that those very, very rotten eggs are kicked out of the system. Um, but still... That environment, growing, you know, and going through those four or five years with different random faces that you've never seen before, should teach you a little bit about life. It's, it's, it's a part of your training. Now, that's, a, that's a very valid point you have actually raised there. And it, it reminds me of the slogan of my university, in Learning and in Character. We need to, but you, you see, the truth is, 
um, I think we're more about the um, having the certificate, and that's yeah. it. So basically, everyone, wh however means you want to get it, just get it, and that's it. So we forget about because that's where you begin to even learn how to show up on time. You, you know, not show up late for meetings and all of that because you have lectures at a particular time. Compose yourself. Now, for me, other things again that I probably would have learned from my university is we're not allowed to wear a sleeveless, um, you know, outfit. So it became part of me after a while. I feel very uncomfortable wearing a sleeveless, you know, outfit especially when I'm in public and all of that. So you see some of this. You're very right. But I'm hoping that, you know, we get to that point uh, where, you know, our universities will not just be teaching us uh, the, the theories because mostly you find out that we're doing theories and teachers, you know, how to live, live outside of the campus. And live outside to, of home. Outside of home yeah. and live in the campus and all yeah. of that and how to survive. Anyway. Hopefully we get to that point. Absolutely. Yeah, best of luck to, um, and luckily, of course, updates are the female lecturer uh, her name was uh, is, uh, is Mrs. Ramat Zakaria, Zakaria. Yes, um, and she is of course um, a lot better now. She's stable and she's uh, back to work, I believe. Um, we'll move away from there, from Ilori, and move to Oshun and Ikiti states, where the APC has, you know, declared with regards to Ikiti and Oshun governorship elections that it would cost 22.5 million naira. For candidates to run for those seats, it says uh, that um, the, of course, this is from the National Secretary for the APC Ketika and Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee. It says 20 million naira for nomination forms and 2.5 million naira for expression of interest forms. Also goes on to say, and maybe they thought that this would provide some level of comfort, that for female and physically challenged aspirants they would have uh, to pay 50 percent of the of the um, said amount and not the whole amount um i'm, I'm you know i'm going i'm gonna speak about that later and um, why i don't think that provided any sort of comfort because you know if you're all running for the same seat everybody should pay the same thing <laughs> i understand physically challenged you know but there shouldn't no, be but, any but, they'll but, pay 22.5 million i, I, I know pay, pay 10 million I, I feel like we're just going to have an hour if we, we probably have an hour we're going to talk about this forever we should but talk it's, about it's, it no seriously it's coming from the premise that you, um, usually if you look at it uh, this is also to encourage you know females to participate if you look at the participation oh, yeah. of women in politics over the years i mean from 1999 it hasn't been quite encouraging up until this moment and so usually political parties uh, across the board have decided to adopt that as a means of saying okay uh, let's subsidize this for the female candidates and maybe that would also encourage them in most cases uh, you want to say i know you're going to argue that with me that uh, financially you want to say that they don't have that muscle as your male counterpart i mean a lot of things will be working for working against them. Well, that's what you're going to say. I'm not going to say that. Because, you know, you're, um, if you were talking about it, you know, equality and some of all of that. So, no, we, all have I'm same, saying, we all have the same 24 hours. No, so I'm saying I'm saying that from that premise. I know you're going to bring up the argument I'm, of I'm equality and all of that. I'm just playing. I, I totally understand, you know, the need to encourage more females mm. um, into politics and, you know, participation. But I think it's, it's not just with reducing the amount of, you know, for nomination forms. There, there has to be... There has to be an environment that makes women understand that they're comfortable enough. Or it welcomes females. Um, look at the percentage of, of women who are in the National Assembly. Look at the percentage of women. Are there any female governors? I mean, just so, so if, you, if you look at it already, you can see the Nigerian political space and the, um, the, our, our leadership recruitment process. You know, already somehow, some ways, is, it makes it difficult for women to get into those positions. So it's not just making it cheaper. Mm -hmm. It is making it making the environment, making the little details here. But, and but you know, but you know, we see, but you know, we still have you know the culture bias and you know religious. And concerns. those are some of the things that need to go. And, and it would take us a long time. I mean, looking at where we're from, if we, we have some culture where women are not allowed, you know, to be at the forefront and express themselves. You know, but but I think I that. think if we're if we're being serious because i've said this so many times that i personally will always campaign for more women in leadership because men have failed and we we have to be honest with ourselves a lot of men have failed and failed woefully and i feel like we need to we need to give it a shot we need to have more females in leadership positions more females in the national assembly more females as ministers more females as governors in in some of all these positions and let's see what the difference would be like and all that but, narrative but, of oh religious and cultural biases but of course you but, but of course you know that that's a big issue 
that's a big issue. How many persons are comfortable seeing their wives out there, you know, that um, annoys me act, so much. being actively involved in politics? I'm, I'm talking about active politics. Now. I'm not talking about, you know, uh, the elective kind of politics where they have to go out for campaigns. They have to, and you know how it can be very tedious and all of that. I've seen situations where you have commissioners who are uh, cabinet members of different, you know, governments in different states, and then you begin to hear the stereotype, oh, she is into prostitution and what have you. But you, you, you can't take the fact that that's part of the job that you have to meet people and you're not just going to be meeting males i mean females so it's not an assembly of female you're going to be interacting with the male and female across different parts of the country well, and outside of the country and some people can take that for different reasons there's so, a, there's so a few this are some of the factors it. there's a few people who have done it not many enough but there's a few people who have done it and i'm sure that i can say that if they've done it then any other female can do it um as long as they have the support from, you know, not just their families, but from society. That, that's, that's what I'm talking about. So we'll, that, begin, we'll begin to change that, that you know, um, mentality and the mindset until that mindset is changed, until people are able to embrace. I mean, up until this moment, you hear people say, I mean, what's that? You end up in the kitchen. Yeah. But, but another thing, you know, I would mention, because the main, you know, the meat of, of the story of this mm -hmm. conversation is really how expensive it is to run for a governorship position in Nigeria. In Ikiti Anoshu State, 22.5 million naira. There is barely any young Nigerian, there's barely any civil servant who wants to run for those positions that can afford that. And that's actually the main part of the conversation here. Why is it so expensive? And why do you need to set that initial hurdle before a person can even drive vie for those positions? And it makes our people already start to look for where they can raise who has 20 million naira? You saw the statistics with the number of people who have 500,000 naira in their accounts across Nigeria. It is so poor. It is so poor and it makes you realize that a lot of people that are living flashy lives, they are all as we're all broke together. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're all broke. We're all so, broke. So a lot more needs to be done, mm. um, you know, to encourage more people to get into those positions. 22.5 million naira seems like it's a lot. We'll take a short break when we come back. We're going into off the press. What major stories made headlines this morning? We'll share with you. <laughs>